you get a bit too hit up on what the right evaluation model is, and um, I mean, we're all aware of Kirkpatrick, and we would certainly recommend thinking around some of those different levels of evaluation, but in the end, it boils down to what you're actually trying to achieve, and on each project, that's different. Um, what's the business spending money on? You know, why are they doing this? What change do they want to uh, have, have uh, happen? And if you can articulate that, you've got a chance of then defining things that you can measure. It's not always the case, um, but for, for example, we've worked with clients where their goal is to reduce time to competence for a particular job. Um, or it may be that they want to replace expensive face-to-face -face training with more cost-effective e-learning that could be used in a, in a more flexible way. Well, it's interesting, isn't it, that LMS stands for Learning Management System, and in a way that's completely the opposite to what informal learning stands for. So I think there's a real limit to how far an LMS can be used to manage or even facilitate informal learning. Um, LMSs come into their own when there's a particular route through a particular piece of learning and you need to be able to demonstrate knowledge or compliance. Beyond that, clearly there are opportunities to build in social networks, other ways of informally sharing knowledge, but whether or not that's actually part of the formal learning management system is a real question I think needs to be answered. I actually think the budget is going to have little or no impact on, on learning and development uh, this year and that's partly because most of the changes don't actually take place until April 2013, certainly the, the tax changes. But in any case I think what we're really looking at is a, is a landscape where we're struggling uh, in the economy, unemployment is very high, particularly among 16 to 24 year olds. Um, so there's, there's clearly going to be an increasing pressure on people who are seeking jobs and those who want to keep jobs, uh, for them to be able to learn and develop for themselves uh, and they, they will, I think, be less expecting of their employer spoon feeding. Um, the employers are in a great position in many ways because it's a biased market. If there's a high level of unemployment, people in theory can pick and choose. Although it's interesting, I was at an HR conference uh, a week or so ago and uh, one of the HR directors of a, of a large engineering company was bemoaning the fact that they had something like 1,200 open vacancies that they couldn't fill, and yet we've got nearly 3 million unemployed. So there's a real question of, about skills. But in terms of the actual budget, I couldn't see anything that would dramatically improve our own profession of learning and development.